Well, well, as things start going good, I'm, I'm like she drug tests me once or twice. I passed both tests, and I passed both tests. And she was telling me like, if you stay on the on the right track, I'm gonna take you off house arrest. Did everything as I'm supposed to. She told me to come up there. Man, I remember when she cut me off house arrest. I was so happy. Again, another clean urine test. I was, I was. It was, it was like, it was almost like being free. She let me go. Now I can hang out at night and stuff and ain't nobody watching me. You know what I mean? So I'm feeling good. This is when the situation kind of went downhill because I started getting dirty urines. I'm out there. I ain't no house arrest no more. And I'm, I'm, I got two jobs and I'm, I'm in college and everywhere is marijuana. In college, we smoking on, on break at school. Uh, I'm working at Pizza Hut. My manager smoked, so sometimes he called me in just to work with him. And before we even open up the store, we smoking. At the middle of the night, I'm doing security, and that's like that's 12 hours. That's seven o'clock at night to seven in the morning doing nothing. All I got to do is just walk around the perimeter once or twice and sign a little check sheet saying I've been there, right? So that's extra boring. So when I'm not walking. I'm sitting in my car getting paid what else to do but to smoke, right? So uh, I'm, I'm smoking. I'm getting dirty urines. I get my first dirty she urine. Raise she raised hell. She mad, but, you know, what I actually find out later is she just bluffing. She, she, she raising hell, but she really, she trying to stray me away from it. I come in with another dirty urine. She decides she going to teach me a lesson. She decides she going to teach me a lesson, so... She take me down to uh, Clayton County Jail. Now, Clayton County Jail, I don't know if you guys have ever been, but this is at the time when Victor Hill was running things. The problem with Clayton County Jail is, in my opinion, biggest problem, inmates' point of view, damn orientation. Oh, my God. Listen, I was more scared of orientation than anything, than any officer, any inmate, any amount of time Orientation is when you first come in in Clayton County Jail, as soon as you get dressed out, you are locked down for three days, period. Now, like I was telling y'all, I didn't have to see a judge. They would escort me straight to the jail, but I still got to go through the jail rules. So every time she locked me up, I got to go through a three day orientation. You talking about in a cell the size of a bathroom for 72 hours for no reason lockdown you ain't done nothing wrong you in jail but it's procedure for everybody come through there when you come through they're gonna lock you down and you're gonna be in orientation for three days and it's, it's bad because when you get there you know you find out you got to be on lockdown they you get there they give you a little mat they give you a little a little ziplock bag with a little bar of soap and deodorant and some bull it, and then they tell you to go in the room and you chilling and you like, damn, you thinking then they pop the doors and maybe we're going to say like the top row come out and they come out like it's a party. They come out throwing mats. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. We gone, bro. I see you, bro. I see y'all. We all come up, bro. I'm gone, bro. Finally, I finally watch TV. Niggas throwing a party because they've been on lockdown three days. They, they Now they getting ready to go upstairs to, you know, to some kind of freedom. And us that just coming in, you thinking like, oh, my God, man. Three days has never, ever, ever been longer, right? So that's orientation. That's the part that I'm scared of. Every time I get locked up, every time Ms. Grant take me in here, I got to go through orientation. So the first time she locked me up, man, it was 24 hours. I was in there. It wasn't nothing. Now, I was in there so fast, I ain't even remember it. She just trying to get me to understand what she can do to me. I go in, she locked me up, uh, locked me up 24 hours. I don't see no judge or nothing. Next thing you know, the next day, I come, they call my name, pack it up. I pack my stuff up, she roll it up, roll, roll, I roll my mat up, go on downstairs. Go on downstairs and, and you know what I mean? Like I said, I don't gotta, I don't gotta do, I don't even gotta go through, um, like when you come in, it's intake. When you leaving, it's uh, uh there's there's another word for it when you leaving. But I ain't got to go through none of that. They just took all.
shit, and she literally gave me my clothes that I had on, and we walked out the back gate, the same one that they escort you in, when they uh when they bring you. She put me in handcuffs, put me in the back, and she took me back to my house. That was the first time, man. All right, I'm back, guys. Sorry for the delay. The first time she locked me up, it was 24 hours. It was kind of like a like a slap on the wrist, kind of like, uh, you know, just to, just to get your mind right. Let me let you uh, feel this cell. Quick reminder, let you know where you came from. Get your mind right. 24 hours, she came and got me. It was all good. Happy, go home. First thing I do is when I go home is I'm rolling up. When rolling up the weed, soon as she, soon as I go home, I'm rolling up the weed. I roll up me two or three celebratory blunts because I know that being that I just got out, she just let me out today. Um, it's going to be 30 days, at least 30 days before she can test me again. Now she want me to be clean when I come back and take that test in that next 30 days. But what's going on is I done found remedies. I got, <clears throat> you got Starship up the street. Oh, y'all give me a second. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm back. All right. Uh, had to go make a sale. <clears throat> Coin their dollars and don't ask me what I sell. That ain't none of your business. Anyway, the problem is I got all these remedies. I got Starship right up the street. They got a whole selection of, um, they got a whole selection just for beating drug tests and, uh, uh, all kind of that stuff. They got a whole probation section. Now, if you're watching this and you're thinking about getting in trouble, let me go ahead and give you a tip. None of that shit work. None of it work. I mean, even if you, you might skate by this time, you might slide by, you wasting your money. None of that shit work. Just, it, it would be much better to just go ahead and do the program. So, boom, I go home, I'm rolling up, because I know my plan is to, around three weeks. But my plan is to smoke for about a week, and then I got three weeks to get clean. In them three weeks, all I got to do is sweat a lot, do some working out. Um, and, and, and before I go in to see her, I'm going to buy one of the uh, detoxes from Star, Starship, and I be clean. The way the detox work is, it was, some, it was crazy, like a red fruit punch. Cost by forty dollars, yeah, forty dollars juice. You shake it up and you drink it. Uh, you supposed to give yourself like three hours before you got to take a test. You drink it. You take, you fill that up with water. You take that same thing, fill that up with water, and you got to drink that also. Uh, you supposed to like pee one time before you actually administer the urine. So, uh, so I'm, I'm taking those. They don't work. They, I'm buying them and they don't work. So I go up there and I go up there to, to, to in 30 days. Now I can, I can even remember that. And this how I, this is when I knew that it was a problem, even though I knew it, I was denying it because even in them 30 days that I have to get clean for my next test, every single day, like, like, listen, every day I'm making an excuse. Uh, it then went from, all right, I got three weeks to get clean. Uh, so I can smoke for this first week and then use the three weeks to get clean to pass my test. When I, when I done smoke for that week, now I got two weeks. So now I, I'm thinking, I'm like, dang, this a whole week that I can't smoke. I go back and get the bottle. Uh, the, the detox I bottle. I read the bottle. The detox bottle say you got, um, the detox bottle say you only need 10 days. So dang, I got 14 days, which means what? I still got four days to smoke. Boom. I can smoke. Now I just start detoxing after 10 days. Same cycle. I get to the 10 days and I'm thinking, dang, 10 days? Well, it say the detox will work for 10 days, so maybe I can smoke for today and tomorrow. And I just try to stay clean for eight days. Because normally, if it say give it 10 days, it means it'll work in about six or seven days. But you want to give it 10 days just to be sure. So, I done reason in my head, I probably got about seven or eight days. So now I done went from three weeks to prepare for the test, 
all the way down to a week to prepare for the test. I do the same thing all the way up into two days, three days. I'm supposed to be going to see this lady tomorrow. I still go up there to start shipping by the juice. I drink the juice. I do what it is supposed to. Fail horribly. She take me back up there to the jail. Orientation. I'm talking about, man, I, now it, it's crazy. I'm putting myself through this hell, but it's hell and I'm crying every time. I go back up there, sit through orientation. She leave me in jail for 72 hours. She leave me in there three days. Um, now the thing about it is, you know, when I'm in there, I'm able to chill because I know, I know what's going on. There. I know I ain't got to see no judge. I know she's going to come and get me. Only thing I'm worried about is really my parole being uh, terminated and being sent back to prison. One thing that I didn't know is that ain't even possible. Uh, it, it could be in extreme circumstances, but parole and Department of Corrections are like two completely different entities. So when the Department of Corrections has released you and say you're no longer our problem and they have turned you over to the parole board, you are now the parole board's problem, which is why when I get in trouble, they just take me to the county jail. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm worried about getting sent back to prison when prison don't want me. They don't they that's not it's not even an option. I'm just a headache for the probation. I'm just a headache for the probation office. So she leave me in there 72 hours. She come and get me. It's the same situation. I do the same thing, y'all. Uh, it's at this point that I realize I got a problem. I mean, I, I don't matter what happened, I cannot stop smoking. When I get to, when I get where I'm at, when I get around my peers, when I get around my my coworkers, when I get around anybody, that's like it's the it's the underground layer of whatever I got going on. If we going to uh, go to the park, we're going to go smoke first. If we're going to go play the video game, we're going to smoke the whole time we're playing the video game. Sometimes we just go and watch movies. Who's going to watch movies without smoking? So my whole existence is, a, is, is, is around my smoking and I can't stop and she keep locking me up. Boom, 72 hours. Now, we do the same thing. She leave me in there 72 hours, she take me out. The third time she, the third time we go through this, I think uh, she had to let me out, and I maybe, I maybe try to get my act together. I pass like two, two urine tests, so it's looking like we're gonna be okay. Next thing you know, I failed another urine test. Boom. All right, so I failed another urine test, and when I failed this third urine test, she take me back to the jail. This time it's a little different because most of the time it's almost like a parent. Most of the time when 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 I come in and I fail the test, she like she fuss at me a little bit. She can show her disappointment. She fuss at me. And even though I feel upset, I feel like I let her down and I'm doing wrong. You know, it's, it's almost for some reason, it's almost comforting because I still have the chance to get out and prove myself. This time when I get the dirty urine. She's not talking at all. She's like, man, let's go. Let's go on down here. We out of here. We gone. We gonna lock you up. And it just feels different. I know something about it's different. I can remember. So when you get, uh, well, anyway, at this one, when you get locked up at this parole office, uh, they take you out the back door. There's already a car waiting in the back. They take you out the back door. They throw you in the back seat, handcuffed, and then they pull around from behind the building. So this time... Uh, my, my, my homeboy Mark had taken me up to, my homeboy Mark took me up to the parole office and he out there waiting on me. And, you know, I hadn't told him, he, he know, he, you know, he know that I take all these precautions to try to pass the test. He know that she be locking me up. As a matter of fact, he's my manager. He's my manager at Pizza Hut. He know exactly what's going on. I don't come out to Pizza Hut. He see the car come from around the building. He pull out behind the car. Now, I don't know. I don't even see him when he pull out because I'm in the back of the, the parole car handcuffed. So I'm kind of leaning to the side as we ride and they taking me up to the jail. Uh, Kim get on the on her on her like walkie talkie. You know, they still got the police walkie talkies. She get on her walkie talkie and and, you know, 
1080, 1095, 1080, such, such, whatever to whoever. And they like, go ahead. She, and she say, there's a silver Malibu behind me following. It could be danger. It could be whatever. It could be an escape attempt. Because it's, it's Kim. She's in a passenger seat. There's a, a another parole officer driving. So I'm, I don't even know. I'm in the back seat like this. She talking. What the? I don't. I look back. When I look back, I see my manager, the same one who came and got me, who, who brought me up here. He following behind us, and honestly, I don't know what he doing. He know that he know that there was a, a chance for me going to jail. He know that um, you know I didn't come out. He know he probably saw me in the back of the car, but I don't think I don't know what he think that he can do about it. So I don't know why he's following me. It could have even been a situation where maybe you know sometimes. Like if somebody go to jail, you could follow them down to the jail, bond them out. It could have been anything, but he following me, right? So I'm I'm and I'm in the back of the of the, of the of the car now. I ain't even worried about myself no more. I'm worried about him because I know that the police on the way. They finna come and get behind him. And even though he ain't do nothing, I just don't want his life to become hard just for dealing with me. All he did was giving me a ride up here. And, and now he finna get searched, he finna get maybe a charge, you know, whatever the case may be. We ride a little bit, we ride a little bit, and that's thing you know, I'm, and I'm, I'm watching him the whole time, I see him turn off. Once he turned off, my heart start being, being it start normal. I'm really, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm sad to see him go, because I, you know, I still know where I'm headed, but I'm glad that he he went on and turned off on because I don't know what this what what he what he got on his mind, but I know they didn't call codes in on him. Man, she take me down to the jail. So when you get to jail, what you do is talk to people. Soon as I get to talking to people, you know you know my I'm, my situation real light. You're facing charges and stuff, but my situation real light. I'm talking to people. I'm like, yeah, I might be in here. 24 hours last time she left me 72 hours so i could be here three days i could be here 24 uh 24 hours look up 72 hours go by nah maybe they just tripping maybe it's a week 10 days go by 20 days go by oh my god see now i'm worried now i am really really worried because now I'm really thinking that she getting ready to send me back to prison because it's been 20 days and I'm thinking I know the situation. 72 hours, you know, you come and get me out of jail. They called me up to visitation one day. And it's odd because, you know, every, every, you're going to have visitation hours, you're going to have visitation days. They called me at a time when it wasn't my visitation day. Once they called me up to visitation, I'm like, uh, when I go up there, it's my parole officer. It's Kim. What's going on? She said, hey, when, when, when we, I'm, I'm going to leave you in here for 30 days. That's like a, a drying out period, a detox. And she said, the only way you can get out is you have to go to rehab. It's a place called My Brother's Keeper. At this point, I, it's, it's, this is a bad idea because I got a job. I got two jobs. I'm in college. Of course, my manager from the Pizza Hut brought me down here, so he know the situation. So... My job right there is pretty cool. I'm sure that I done got uh, fired from my security job. And with Griffin Tech, you know, you have to, it's, it's, it's curriculum. So, like, you got to keep up. If I miss a whole semester, then I might just have to wait till, till the next year and catch back up where that was because the class be done moved on. So she's telling me that I got to go in uh, to my brother's keeper and it's a 90 day program and I have to complete that in order to get back out and get back on the active parole. So so I got to do 30 days in here, then do 90 days out there where I got to sleep at some place, a rehab. I'm like, I'm and, I'm and I'm telling them like, Kim, like, I understand what you're saying, but. I am lose every time. I got a son on the way. I got a job. I got two jobs. I'm, I'm trying to get my life together, but I'm gonna lose everything. I'm in college. She don't give a damn. She like, man, you keep getting these dirty urines. You got to go up there to my brother's keeper and, and get clean. Cool. Now I've been in here more than 30 days. 
when I, I it wasn't that long. It was about 35 days, and she come to find out, I had to wait on the bed to get open. So you got to wait till somebody either go home or go to prison, or you got to wait till a bed get open. Man, she come and get me and take me to this place called my brother's keeper. So all it is is, if you're familiar with Riverdale, it's in Riverdale. It's off Highway 85 and Garden Walk. If you're going down Garden Walk, if you're going down Highway 85, Garden Walk is the intersection. It was one of the first intersections. If you look right on the left, there's an apartment. It looked like regular apartments. Got the sign out front. I can't remember the name of it, but they are they regular apartments. They like um some kind of like a rooming apartment type where you can pay by the month, even by the week or something like that. But they regular apartments. But the first building in the apartment has been dedicated or allocated for this drug program, My Brother's Keeper. Two people, there are two like on-site uh, uh, residents, former addicts uh, that live there. The main guy was an older guy named Zach. He was an older crackhead, uh, all gray. He wore glasses. When I tell you, Zach was absolutely no problem. Barely even seen him. When you seen him, you speak to him, he go back in his room. He got his own room. You know, it's, it's a situation to where, like, if somebody make a call, he'll enforce the decision. They say you got to go back to prison, he'll sign on it. But he ain't looking for nothing. He let you do what you like. If you gonna mess up, he ain't trying to catch you. He ain't, because my brother's keeper is a is a is a house where it's an apartment and we supposed to be in there. So they come and check to see if you there at night. There ain't no locks on the doors, but they come to check to see if you there at night. And if you ain't, you only got twice to get in trouble. Your your second time getting in trouble, you are kicked out of there. So, man, she didn't, she come and take me to this place. I hate it. Zach is cool. He don't mess with you, but there's a weekend resident. On the weekend, Zach goes somewhere else, home or whatever. Then there's this other black guy, a, a former addict. He come in. He pretty cool. Me and him used to play chess all the time. He heard I had a chess game. I don't know how. We get on the chess board and I whoop him. He might slip up and win every now and then, but most of the time I whoop him. And I think that gave him a certain respect for me. Oh, man, I realize. Um, so I just realized just then that I, I missed a a very vital part of the story. So from where we at, guys, we're going to have to rewind. We're going to have to rewind and go back. So I'm at my brother's keeper. So I'm going to rewind just a little bit. All right. I'm in jail. I'm in jail for the third time. And what happened is, um, 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 again, y'all got to remember, we talking years stacked on years. So I, uh, what happened is I, I just done forgot what which jail this happened at because I'm saying to myself, I'm thinking that the, the, the thing that I'm recalling happened in um, the situation that I'm recalling happened in DeKalb County Jail because DeKalb County is where I'm from. But I paroled out to Clayton County. So it I'm, and I'm, so I'm thinking. Uh, because sometimes these shouldn't cross, but it, it could have been, I don't think she's ever uh, locked me up and taken me to the DeKalb County Jail, but the situation that I'm telling you guys about, I think it happened in the DeKalb County Jail. So, understand this, the, the facts that I'm telling y'all are totally true, I just, I'm mixed up, you know what I mean? Uh, so what happened is, she take me to the jail. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this was on the last 30 day, the, 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 the visit when I did 30 days, man, I'm in there. I get a, I get a roommate roommate come in. Um, uh, I like him off the rip. He's a, he's a little bit shorter than me. Uh, light skinned dude tattoos. Uh, so of course look to be kind of like me always in trouble or street dude, but you know, I'm bald head. He got his hair. So, I can't even remember his name. What I remember is every time the pop, every time the dough pop, he run to the phone. On to my soon as the dope. Okay, so when you're in the dormitory, you're gonna have at least, we're gonna say at least 30 people. There are three phones on the wall, three blue phones, securities. These phones, they ch they charge a arm and a leg to use. So if you're using that phone, it's very possible that that phone call could be 
uh, could add up to anywhere from twenty to thirty dollars. It could be twenty-four dollars. It could be twenty-seven dollars. It could be nineteen dollars. But those are expensive phone calls. Um, it's something like when 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 you call from Secure, it's, it's like twelve dollars to accept the call. Then it's a then it's a charge for every minute. Like so, it's a like a dollar and fifty every minute. You go the whole fifteen minutes. You know. So my roommate, every single time that the the doors pop. He, he he hit the door. He run down to the phone. He trying to beat the other guys to, to the phone. When he get on the phone, if they let us out from seven o'clock, from seven to nine, when they let us out at seven o'clock, he on the phone until they popping the doors again. I'm talking about they done pop the doors. Everybody in their room, they locking doors and everything, and he still on the phone. They literally got to cut the phone off on him. You know, he like this. All right, I'm going. I'm going. I'm in the phone. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. No, make sure you gotta. All right, I'm going. I'm going on the phone. I'm on. All right, now they telling me to go. I gotta go, but I'm gonna call you when I come back. I, all right, uh, they cut the phone off. Damn, boom, he will run upstairs. So he doing this every day, every time we come out. Now I'm intrigued. I'm like, dang, bro. You know, we get to talking because we spend the time in the cell. He tells me that his girl is a booster. All he talk about is his girl. You know, and the way he talk about her, he never really uh, uh, described the, you know, no images, but he just talk about what she do for him and how she good and how good she is and, you know, uh, how how she's an asset to his team. He tell me that his girl is a booster. I don't know about the boost game at this time. What's a booster? He said his girl, she go to stores, uh, pack a whole bunch of stuff in her. Is, and she lead the store. Says she a pro with it. You know, uh, says she been doing it for so long. She know, like she know the game. So she know what to get, what not to get. And then she know how to convert merchandise into money on a big scale. I can't remember. He he had done broke it down for me. When I think about it, man, it was almost like um, whatever she was doing, it was almost equivalent to about $2,500 a day, every day. So not only is he riding this phone when his when the mail come in, he can every time the mail come in, he getting like fifty, a hundred fifty dollars. You know, he off the rip, he living good. He on the phone, he living good. And I'm thinking, again, from my prison mentality, what you telling this girl got doggone to have her like this? She she clearly taking care of you. My folk would have been told me to stop calling. Yeah, man, she so, a booster. He tell me about her. He said, man, my girl, he say, he say, my girl, uh, he said, my girl, she got a best friend and she a booster too. Yeah. You know, off the rip, that light bulb. Doom. She a booster too. Yeah. She ain't got no, she got a dude. She had one, she just broke up with him. What she look like? Oh man, she cute. She been cute. I been wanting to hit her. If it wasn't for my girl, I'd have been hit her. But she ain't gonna deal with me like that. She don't like me. What's her name? Erica. You, your girl, let me talk to her. She might. I could try. You know, and and at this time, at this point in time, I got I got a, a son on the way. So I'm handling the whole household at home. I got a son on the way. Oh, uh, man, she let me, he let me talk to her. And I can remember when he when he got on the phone with his girl. And he he was talking to his girl like I got my roommate. He want to talk to Erica, and she like and and I can I it, it wasn't a good thing. She he he was saying stuff like, Nah nah, he's great. Nah, he ain't got a lot of time, you know. So I could tell she was probably asking the questions like, What well, how much time he got? I don't want no jailhouse. Cause I you know from I, I'm, I'm I'm completely speculating. She could be looking at her friend like. I don't want what y'all got. I don't, you know what I mean? I need to call you wasting all the money. and the, I don't want no jailhouse relationship. What y'all got, right? Whatever. She ended up putting on the phone. Put me on the phone. I talked to her. You know, when you get on the phone with them girls, like them chat line girls or them, them whatever kind of girls, especially them chubby girls, you know, they be sounding like, like, a, like, a, like a bag of chips or hoy cookies. You know what I mean? They, they be sounding, you know what I mean? That, 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 that oh my goodness. So she like, hey, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? Hey, we talk, boom, we talk. I, I do my best to shoot my shot from the cell. She tell me that she's really not interested, but I can have her number. 
she like, man, you know, when you get out, if, if it's all good, when you get out, you know, hit me when you get out. But I ain't really interested. Cool. No problem. Can't be mad at that, right? Man, we go back in the cell that night. We talking. You know, I, I know I got at least 30 days. He been telling me about his case. So what's going on with his case he is caught some kind of violation over in Clayton County. He telling me about, you know, about the case and about the situation and his probation officer. And I'm listening and, and he tell and he happened to say, yeah, man, uh, he like my probation officer. He keeps stressing. I don't know what my probation officer going to do. He like, man, she might, she might revoke me, send me back to prison. She could let me go. It was just a technical, you know, whatever, whatever. This is what he keep going on. Some kind of way we get to talking about the probation. And, you know, I'm telling him that. My parole officer is on my neck. I'm, I'm in here because of my parole officer. You know, a white lady, kind of attractive. She cool, but she a bitch. He say, man, he like, man, listen, my parole, my probation officer, she a black lady. Pretty hell. She real nice, man. Little, uh, real, real nice, real small, pretty. He like, man, she a straight. Like, man, she is the devil. I'm like, yeah. He like, yeah. I said, bro, I said, what's your probation officer name is? Because the reason why I asked him this is because my sister is a probation officer in Clayton County. <laughs> and he and the way he done described it, like this little pretty girl. So I said, what's your uh, probation officer is? Who your probation officer is? <laughs> so I kind of, I, I, you know, I come back. He said, what? I said, bro, you ain't gonna believe that. He said, what? That's your probation officer? I said, nah, I ain't never been on probation. He said, what happened? I said, bro, that's my sister. He said, ain't no way. He said, bro, you lying. I said, what's her whole name? He said, I show him my arm. I, I told y'all I had my siblings, all my siblings on my arm. He like, boy, are you serious? I'm like, look, that's my... I'm like, I can go down and call her right now. He say, look, bro, if you, can you please? He like, I, you and your sister tight? I said, yeah, yeah, me and my sister real tight. We like, yeah, yeah, that's, it's, it's safe to say we are tight. He said, man, can you ask her? I said, look, let me tell you something. I said, you see, I'm in jail. She's a probation officer. We are on two different sides of the law. I break law. She enforce law. I'm like, I'm telling you, we, we keep that part out of our relationship. We don't, you know, she, she, she live her, I live mine, and we meet in the middle, but we have a clear understanding. I don't step in her field. She don't step in mine. I'm like, so what that means is I probably can't help you. And if she know that you dealing with me, it's probably a worse look than a better look. You know, I'm telling you. He like, bro, just, he thinking in his head, man, it's your sister, man. She gotta, she gotta help you, man. She gotta be able to listen. I'm like, listen, bro, you, you ain't, you ain't catching what I'm putting down. You ain't picking up what I'm putting down, but it's all good. Whole time I've been in jail, I have not called any. I, I called my baby mama, my future baby mama, and I called maybe people that I'm dealing with. I ain't call no family out there, and especially not my sister, first of all, because she would be disappointed. Second of all, because like I said, I know she is the police, and we on two different sides of the field. But you know what? You put me on the phone with a girl. You know, we showing uh, what, the, what it's called uh, uh, good graces and stuff like that. You, you, you looked out for me. I owe you a favor. I got you, my boy. I go down there, I call my sister. I told you, and I'm surprised because this phone call is expensive. Now, being that I'm calling, she would accept it, but this definitely ain't going to be no, no, you know what I mean? And I, I ain't mad, ain't no, she got a whole family, you know what I'm saying? She pick up the phone, I talk for, for about, when I'm, I'm talking about like, I'm, I'm sitting on the phone right here talking about two minutes. I'm talking to her, she answered the phone. When she answered the phone, we talking, I'm like, hey, hey, hold up. How, how Jazzy doing, you know, how, how the baby doing, how, and she get to talking. My, my, my roommate is standing 
right here because the phones are like little booths that you can sit in. He's standing right here with the booth. He literally can't believe I'm on the phone with her. He's looking at me. I'm like, yeah, I, how, the, how the family, how everybody doing? She's like, hey, everybody, do, what they say about you? When you going to come home? So while she's talking to me, I do like this. I put the phone up like this and let him, he, he grabbed the phone. He let him, and he listening to his probation officer, but she talking to me. And she talking with some sense. She ain't talking like she talked to him. When she talked to him, it's <laughs> you going to prison, your stupid. No, no, no. She talking to me with some sense. So I let him. I let him listen. And he like his face. He can't believe it. Like dang, this her. I get back on the phone. Like I talk. We talk for a few minutes. Um, when I know I got about four five minutes left, I'm like, let me ask you something. She like, what's up? I said, do you know a guy, uh, a light-skinned guy, uh, his name, his last name, Williams, and he says, uh, she said, yeah, yeah, he, he one of my probations, he on my caseload. I was like, for real? She was like, yeah. I said, uh, are you familiar with his case? He going, he, uh, how he, she said, oh, yeah, he's going to prison. So I looked at him, because he can't hear me. He can't hear her. So I looked at him. I'm like, for real? She was like, yeah, 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 he's going to prison. Oh, uh, I'm tired of him. He be, he be f***ing up. I done gave him two, three chances. He going to prison. I'm like, man, he my roommate. She said, oh, look, John. She like, look, see, you should have told me that first. She like, I ain't discussing my, like, she like, no, I ain't discussing. I can't do that with you now. You, you tripping. I can't. She like, but, but you can tell his he going to prison. You can tell him that straight from me. <laughs> I'm like, all right. I'm <laughs> I would tell him, but all right. She like, all right, thank you for calling, man. And, you know, be safe in there. I'll see you in a little while. All right, cool. I hang up the phone. Boom. Hey, bro. Your ass going to prison.